Hello, my crafty friends. I was so excited to be invited to participate in this hop by Catherine Pooler. It is part of their global adventure series, and today's hop is celebrating Canada. Now, I did do an unboxing video when I got my supplies because I was just so excited. I have been using Catherine Pooler inks for so long, and I absolutely love them, but I didn't have a lot of their other products. So, as I said, I did do an unboxing video, but I don't want this one to get too long, so I'm probably going to post that after this one goes live. And that way, if you're hopping along and you want to see the projects and the tutorials, I'll have that right here in this video for you. But if you want to see the supplies as I unbox them, I will post that link in the description box below. The products that I used, of course, are the inks. We have Deck the Halls. This is a new one to my collection and I think it might be my new favorite green ink. You'll see it in the card. Oh my goodness, I love the green ink. Grass skirt, s'mores and over coffee. Dress blues, which is a new blue in my collection and oh, I'm really liking it. Glitz, now glitz, I'm also really liking. Sauna has been a long time favorite kind of deep rich yellow but mm, I'm really really having fun with glitz these days oops and then rock and red and cranberry fizz so lots of great colors and all of these colors and dye inks coordinate with the moose crossing pattern paper so there's all the colors that are listed there and I went over the paper in my unboxing video and how much I liked it so I did use this for my card today and then of course there's the Yukon uh, sequin mix and I have, there's beads in there too. So if you're putting this in a shaker, the beads have a little bit of weight to them and will help uh, the sequins move inside your shaker. So that's the Yukon sequins. Then of course the stamps, O Canada with the coordinating dies, the Forever Maple stencil and the coordinating die for that. And I did bring in an additional stamp and that was this Happy Birthday from Happy Birthday Many Ways. Now this set is uh, from my collection. It is not part of the O Canada set, but I knew I wanted to make a birthday card, so I pulled this one out. I'm, and I do love it with all the different happy birthdays in different fonts and sizes. So for my card today, we are going to make a mini slimline card that's also a fun fold. I really like making mini slimlines and slimline cards. I love fun folds. I believe it's called a pullout fun fold. The A2s of that fun fold has been around for many years. But a few weeks ago, I actually made one and said there would be a tutorial coming. I figured out the measurements for a mini slimline size. So that's what we're going to make today. So this is the front of my card. And my favorite mini slimline size folded is three and a half by six inches. That fits in a number eight or a six and three quarter inch envelope. And I've shown these and talked about these envelopes in other mini slimline videos in Canada and the US they are readily available even at dollar stores and I had actually picked uh, mine up at our local pharmacy so I did use some of the coordinating stamps to stamp on the envelope and tie it all in move that aside as well so you start off with a card base that is seven inches by six inches now I don't throw away any of those leftover pieces. They are all very usable. So I don't want you to think that rather than getting two A2 card bases out of your letter size sheet of cardstock, that the rest is wasted. It's not. You save those. They make great layering panels, sentiment strips. I get so much use out of those leftover pieces. So as I said, you are cutting seven by six inches. You're going to score it in the center at three and a half inches. And that gives you your folded card base. Now I did do some assembly ahead of time, uh, just, just to save time. I added my paper panel, which is from the Moose Crossing patterned paper. I like my matting layers to be a quarter inch smaller. So this being three and a half, my matting layer is three and a quarter by five and three quarters. And when you attach it, you're just going to attach it just along the outside edge. Don't put adhesive all in the center, just on the outside edge. Attach that to the front of your card, and then you can choose a shape for your opening. For today's uh, tutorial, I chose a circle, and a lot of card creators will probably have a circle die in their stash, but you can use any shape that you would like. So you line up your circle and you want even borders on either side, but you can slide it up and down wherever you would like it on your card front. And then you turn it and run it through. Now that's another reason why I like the six inch length for a mini slimline. 
Another popular size is three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. And that's fine, except that that six and a quarter won't necessarily work uh, sliding it through a lot of die cutting machines. I'm using the Spellbinders Platinum 6. So you run that through your die cutting machine, and then because you only put adhesive on that very outer edge, that center piece is going to pop out. Now I just kind of popped it back in here with some uh, purple tape here, so let me move that. So you're left with the patterned paper piece and also the white card base. I'm saving this to use on another project and I just have a little baggie here. You can see I have some extra uh, leaves and beavers and so that just gets tucked in with the pattern paper and I'll be using that on another project. And then because remember the pattern paper is adhered to white card, there is also a white cardstock circle. So I took my white cardstock circle and a slightly smaller circle die and I die cut that and threw away the outer frame. And this is going to give me what we're gonna pop inside. So I used blending brushes and some inks. I used the dress blues and the over coffee ink with a little bit of s'mores and um, just blended a background. We're gonna put a beaver on here and I just didn't want the beaver kind of floating in midair. So you can set this piece aside. This is your card base and then the sequins and the sentiment, all of that I add afterwards. So that's your outer card. And I'll just move it here out of the way. And your inner card is going to measure seven and a quarter by five and three quarters. And you're gonna make some score lines. You're gonna score it at three and a quarter, and you're gonna score it at five and a quarter. And that's all you need for your inner card. Now, don't worry about writing down the measurements. I will have them listed in the description box below. So this is what you have. You've got an inside panel, and then two, I meant these are two inches wide and I did kind of pre-stamp my sentiments and add my pattern paper. And it's something you might want to do. It's easier to adhere and stamp while you have a flat card versus when it's folded and adhered inside your card. So now we're just going to do our folding and we're going to fold it kind of in half. This is the three and a quarter inch score line. And I did bring a bone folder over because I do like nice crisp folds. So that is the three and a quarter inch. And so you're almost making a reverse Z fold. In Canada, we say Z. So you're folding that one out. The first three and a quarter inch score line is a valley fold. And then the five and a quarter inch is a mountain fold. So there is your inner card. And I'm just gonna adhere it inside the card here. When I was coming over, I had, a, I had a lovely glass yogurt jar with a wet paper towel in it. And that's what I used for my glue for a very long time. But on my way over here, I dropped it and it shattered all over the floor, which was quite an adventure because my Sheltie is an eat first, ask questions later kind of dog. And I had just put lunch leftovers away and he was pretty sure there was food on the floor. So I'm trying to grab him and keep him out of the broken glass. Thankfully, I had shoes on and get him in the bedroom, collect our rescue dog who was terrified then that she had done something wrong. Yeah, it was an adventure got the glass cleaned up and I was so disappointed because I use it all the time. I don't have another glass jar. I will have to buy more yogurt, but necessity is the mother of invention. So I cut down a water bottle and that's going to just have to do, do for me. And then I put my wet paper towel in the bottom of that. I'm going to use my Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue today. It's one of the glues that I really like. One of my viewers told me about putting a hairband on the side of it and I slide my pin in. I do slide my pin in upside down because when I put it in the other way, I stab myself repeatedly. So I can store my glue on that damp paper towel. It doesn't dry out and I don't have to keep putting the pin in every time I stop to do something. So this piece, your inner card, is going to glue inside here with the pull flap on the right. And you just kind of want an even border around the three sides here. This side is gonna fit in, but of course you want that edge to be straight as well. And that's why I said about doing the stamping and the decorating ahead of time. So you're not trying to get in here with all of this. And if you're using a stamp positioner, it works much better to have a flat panel that you can use. So we're only putting glue on the largest portion. This is the only part that's going to be at attached in. So I'm gonna add my glue. Quite often I will just do little dots, but I don't want it to dry out. It's quite warm in the house today. Yay, finally some warmth. So now I'm just gonna glue that inside the card.
Using wet glue gives you a minute or two to slide it around. I can make sure that my edges are fairly straight here. And then I'm gonna give it a press with the bone folder. And that will just give it a nice tight seal. And there is most of the card finished. And then remember that little piece here? It's gonna be glued right in there, so you're not gonna see that sentiment. So let's get the decorating stuff ready here. The Forever Maple stencil, I just used a variety of the inks and did a couple of pages with them because they're so pretty. And then I used the die to cut them out and I didn't line them up perfectly. It was kind of a mistake the first time, you know, you, you get a feel for these things, but I like the shadow effect it gives. So we're gonna go with it. So I'm just gonna add some glue here and pop that onto my circle. Now I do want the edges to stay within the circle because you don't, if it's sticking outside the circle, the edges will catch when you pull the card open. So whatever you're attaching to your, I'm saying circle, but whatever, whatever shape you choose to use, make sure that your decorations mostly stay inside the confines there. And I'll add another one. You can see I've got a little R on there in pencil. I did kind of go through them and decide out of all of the leaves which one I wanted to use and which one would go on the right and which one would go on the left so we weren't trying to do that here on camera. And then the last one, this one goes in the center and I'm not going to add foam tape to the leaves because we're going to put a beaver on and the beaver will have foam tape. There's my leaves and my beaver. I have foam tape already adhered. So I'm just gonna peel the liner off here. And add, add my little beaver on. Oh my gosh, he's cute. I think he could be holding any number of the items in, the, um, in that stamp set as well. So let's pop him right there. I've got his tail and his feet inside that circle. And now we're gonna ad adhere the circle onto the card and you can see we're not going to put adhesive all over the back because we don't want it to stick down here. We're going to flip it over and just put adhesive on about half of the left hand side. And that's because I've turned it over so that will give me the side to put the adhesive on. If you're not sure you can make a pencil mark so that you don't end up with the glue on the wrong side. And now we're going to just pop that in there and make sure that I've got even edges and my ground is straight and the beaver is straight. And there is the card. So you can add your sentiment strip, your sequins, embellish however you want to, and open the card like this. It still stands nicely for display, and you can see how well it fits inside those mini slimline envelopes. This will still mail for a single stamp, actually, even with the extra folds. So a really easy fun fold to make. It's still got some impact to it. I love doing fun folds. It's just such a fun surprise for the recipient when they open it up. Another option would be to make this, this element a little bit larger than your opening and then there would be no chance of it poking through. So you could do that. Remember, you can use any shape that you would like. I'm gonna show you another idea. I'm um, not part of the tutorial. It'll be on my blog later on in the week, but I just couldn't resist making another card with that cute paper, the moose crossing papers. I've added more of the stamps from O Canada. Used the colors. This is that deck, the halls. Isn't it just an absolutely beautiful green? There's the dress blues with the mug. I added happy birthday. I didn't bring this set over because I will have it linked on my blog, but just to show you that you can do an aperture following the same idea, but just not have a pullout. So another, another idea for you. And then I also wanted to share the maple stencils. Oh my gosh. So I did the stenciling in similar colors to the one on the card. And then I put like a paper glaze over top. I'm kind of new to the paper glaze, like adding things other than ink to stencils. And I put it on kind of thick and it bled underneath the stencil, but I didn't mind it. I set it aside to dry and I quite like it. I can still use the dies to cut them out or use this as a card background, but just another way you can use the Forever Maple stencil and the coordinating die. So I hope you've enjoyed my card. I've inspired you to make something different if you're used to making A2 sized cards and show you that Funful cards don't have to be complicated at all, but they can really add an impact to, to your card.
If you enjoyed my video today, please hit that like button. I'd love you to subscribe to see more. And all of the information for this blog hop is going to be in that description below so you can hop along to the next creator. I can't wait to see what the rest of them did with the same supplies. It's always so much fun to hop along and be inspired. And that's it for me today.